Composing Gloves here, and today we're talking about a free synth that really shouldn't be free. It's vital. It is the king of free synths. If we're not talking modular, it's the dang best, most impressive free thing out there. Uh, a lot of people have already covered it. It came out in November 2020, and it still absolutely destroys any other free synth. If you have something that you think is comparable that's not modular, or like an entire like DAW system, because I can think of a few other things that are comparable in level of impressiveness. But as far as synths go, this thing is a monster. So I've got some presets here just to show you a little bit what it sounds like. I like making wubs and dubs, and this is a, a pack I made last year. It's just a couple, a couple presets. If we come over, this one's using the formants filter and uh, the effects are jamming. <laughs> Come on over to the bass plug. We got a bassy brass. Go up a little higher for this one. This one features resynthesis, a great feature, and a feature that's very unique that I don't use in a ton of patches, but if you're making ethereal pad sounds, there's the ability to have stereo modulators. So if you have like, one modulator, you can have it be different in the left and the right channel. So um, pretty dang crazy. Here's another, this one's called Hungry, Hungry Frog. Here's the effects on this one. Kind of an interesting sound. There's another version of it. made to play really low notes and then some nonsense goes on in order to get these sort of weird sort of airy tones. But there are some sounds, uh, and of course I'm focusing mostly on bass sounds, that's what I like to do. Bass sound design, I think it's the most interesting and most fun sound design to do. Uh, so let's go to the default preset and let me show you here um, what's sort of going on. So you have over here your oscillators, they are wavetable oscillators, change them to 2D, and there is an editor, I'm not gonna dive into the editor, but again, this is all free. <laughs> this is freaking crazy for a free thing. Uh, it has its own wavetable editor built in. Um, and some interesting things you can do with the wavetable. We could come in, we could pick one. Uh, the one, one of my favorites is the Drink the Juice. Or oh, the Jaw Harp is also pretty good. Drink the Juice is up here. There's a lot of interesting resonancy things. And you know, you've got your envelopes. Your, you can have up to six of these. Once you use four, it will continue adding. Same thing with the LFOs. It will add LFOs if you use them all. So say we hook up an LFO. We'll just hook up a bunch of dud LFOs to do nothing. So you can see how they get added on. So there's five, six, seven, eight. And it caps at eight. Where the envelopes come over here. This, is it. this would be interesting to just give someone as a patch. And they'll be like, what the heck? Then it caps at six. So extensive sections and these are completely modular like a system like this you would think you would need to pay for it but no you don't it's it's just right here you've got your macros um and then the filters are just crazy so let's uh let me redo what i just did here because it's freaking bananas looking all right so let's say that we have a wavetable we want to go through let's just pick some interesting one sure stabbed we'll set up an lfo to scroll through it we'll pick a small region and we'll go to the 3d view because that's the coolest view and let's pick a, a bit quicker of a shape. And maybe let's look around for, there we go, yeah, some FM kind of stuff. And let's go down to the filter. So down here in the filters, there's a bunch of really cool, unique filters. Some of the really fun ones to do are the formant, comb, and phaser filters. So let's do a, a formant filter and we'll call this good. And we will move this around with the LFO. And let's add in our effects now. So to pump it up, let's add on a distortion and a compressor. We will make the distortion first. We'll make it a, a sign fold could be cool. We'll go for a, a soft clip. We'll leave it as a soft clip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower, actually we're gonna raise this and bring the ratio up. And 
And let's change over to a more aggressive distortion, perhaps a fold distortion, like a sine fold. We'll bring up. And by the way, this compressor, the way this works is these are basically upwards compression. It's gonna yank stuff that's below the threshold up. And these are gonna push stuff that's above the threshold down. There is a single band mode, but the multi-band mode is really cool. And so it acts like an OTT. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll add in a filter and give it an interesting resonance point. And we'll also pick an interesting filter here as well, maybe to stack on top of what we've already got going on. So we'll pick here this low high flange and we'll also have this move around. And typically you wanna tune these. We'll add on a verb at the end. And now we can pick some different. Like that's pretty dope right there. Maybe we begin to hone in on this. There's a bunch of random modulators that you could go into and sort of get crazy with. Uh, but let's add some unison. Let's add two voices. We'll give it a little bit lower. And then there are these different bend modes. Let's go for a smear. And you can kind of see what that does to the waveform there. Uh, maybe if we go over to the 2D mode, you can kind of view that. Now imagine this moving and doing that at the same time. Um, and on this one, we'll bring the depth down a bit. And we're, we're starting to go places quickly. And you can see a lot of these features, these are like really well thought out workflow features. And it's got some cool, unique options that are special to this synth. Now, something I said we could do that, um, you know, I haven't messed with is there's the option to have stereo on these things. So maybe we grab another one and let's grab this and put it on here. And this one will be stereo and we'll take the other one off. Well, we'll have it be a similar shape, but we'll make this one stereo. So what this is happening is now there's a left and a right version that are being set, sent separately. We bring it down. And in this way, we get sort of a wider sound. Now this one's pretty crazy. We probably want them to be pretty closely related since this is such a low sound. And I do have my output turned down on the master just for some of the presets because I wasn't paying attention to level when I first made this. So let's bring this like way down and bring it up accordingly. Now let's see if we can get something a little nicer. We'll bring it down an octave. And I always forget the shortcut. It's shift, you hold shift. Yeah. So here, once, now once we have this, I often like to look for a little residency packet, pocket. So we'll go ahead and look for that. We'll have this get moved around according to this. We can control how high and low with the gain. So we'll set this and give it just a little nudge. So it'll go, it'll go up and down. Maybe we give it a bigger nudge and just set it lower. And then we can control where it's at according to this. Now the resonance will control how like narrow it is. I don't want to mess with the resonance for this. We'll just move the cutoff, sort of set this a little lower. Maybe we'll give, you can see the stereo on this, the two different ones. So we're gonna be a little careful with this move. And let's also consider maybe opening up the brightness here. So we'll come over here on the high one and you just click it to select it and we'll move the gain up and we'll just give it a gentle nudge. And we have ourselves a crazy sound. We could experiment with more unison. There's delay in choruses here, which could give us some interesting sort of phasey smoothed out textures, but it doesn't stop here. You could take this sound and really go up another level. So we have all this cool stuff on here. What would it sound like if we did this, you know, like two times? Well, we can't, but before we do, let's go ahead and save this as our cool, we'll call it the tutorial preset or whatever because I just, you know, I'm just sort of doing this off the cuff, uh, just so we save where we are. And let's go in and we will go to uh, text, not text to wavetable, resynthesize preset to wavetable. It's going to basically, the way I understand it, sample it and create a wavetable out of it. And then our chain will still be there. So it'll go through the whole chain again. So we'll go ahead and click that. 
you can see it's generated this bananas looking waves table and sometimes this leads to some really cool results. <laughs> And so let's go ahead and bring this down to a much smaller region. So right there is a sweet spot. You're gonna have to be a little bit of a hunter if you do this kind of technique. Let's nudge this back. And let's have this, ooh, man, we're so close. I think that's pretty cool right there. And you might come in here and consider turning off some of these. I should also mention there are filters. You saw how I use this filter. You can do similar things with filters built into other parts. For example, the distortion has a filter built in. So resynthesis is another option we have. Sometimes it's a, a great idea, sometimes it's not. Usually if you're gonna do it, you want to have that in mind while you're setting up your sounds. Uh, another cool thing, now this thing is, is not free. You have to pay for this because it runs on a server and he has to pay to make the server work. So in order to do this, it's like a $5 a month subscription. Um, and it, it's really fun, honestly though, the without it, it is, it's I mean everything you saw here is completely free. I just want to show you this thing because it's it's kind of like a must show if you're showing off vital. Uh, there's a text to wave table. They have all these different voices, but I've experienced some issues with certain voices. So I'm just gonna stick here with the English and we will go for the US version and we'll call this like we'll just have it say composing. It will synthesize it. So here's the the wave table that will say the word composing. We'll give it a sawtooth waveform to drive this thing, and we should hear it. There you go. Pretty cool. Now, with this, of course, you get all these little formancy sections that would normally be harder to get. Like a vowel filter, except you can type whatever word you want in and use it. I and mean, this way you don't have to take speech and turn it into wavetables, like use recordings to generate wavetables. You can just generate some interesting formancy speech right here. We have a lot of voices to pick from. Although if you experience some issues with it saying it's offline, I would just try switching the voice first. Uh, that could be the issue. But we could come through and follow sort of a similar thought process. The matrix is a whole other ordeal. It's like, if you're an expert of experts, you can come in here and set up some really cool chains to do just some really neat sound design. But one last thing I want to show you is, uh, let's go to the initialized preset. Let's say we're making a pad and we have an attack and we want this attack time to be variable per each voice. Um, and let's say that we've got, you know, a unison. So it's just a nice big thick pad. And as we hit more notes, we want this to be just sort of moving around. Well, we can do so with the random generators down here. Now there's a style but they have in here several interesting ones. Let's hook this up to the attack. And so this is gonna randomly generate noise. And you can see it vary. Now, Perlian noise is a type of noise that's based off of the neighboring values of the last random output. So it's always pretty smooth. There is sample and hold, which this will pick a value and sit there for a bit. And you get a sort of choppy looking behavior. And then you get these sort of unusual ones, sign interpolate. But the one that's really interesting to me is the Lorenz attractor. It's, you know, no one I think explaining this really knows unless you're like a physicist what this is. All I know is it's some model and it spits out random stuff. And it's a really weird option that you will not find like anywhere else because it's just a bizarre thing to have. So you have these sort of off the cuff sort of weird things in the middle of it. And you can get random values that way. So you've got a lot of options for randomness. The modulation is really just decked out. Um, like for example, in the LFOs, we can have our paintbrush and we can essentially, um, uh, we have all these different modes as well. You can essentially create a sequencer in here to do things uh, that you want. You can change the grid length and how many there are or are not. And that's how you can make sequencers. So the sequencers actually aren't directly in here because the LFOs 
do that. But if you have any questions about it, let me know. There's a, there'll be a link down below to the free plugin database with Vital pulled up. And you will be able to go to the developer link or it might say demo. I'm thinking about changing it or to download site or whatever. Uh, but I just want you to see there's a database there with a ton of other free stuff. So if you're into free stuff, uh, check that out. It'll be pulled up for Vital specifically, but there's a lot more in there if you hit the reset button. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.